<clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the love that you've given us in your Son, for the blessing of eternal life, and, and for your constant presence with us. You make all kinds of promises, and then you follow through on them. And, and sometimes those promises seem impossible. Sometimes it seems like, like they're never going to happen, and then it, often, just when we've given up hope, you come crashing in to remind us that, yes, you did make that promise, and, and that while we can't, you don't always work in the time frame that we want you to, that we can trust you to keep your promises. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, we got Genesis 15 through 17, and, um, and so what we're going to do is there's a lot of stuff to cover. All right, um, not the sort of thing that we can cover in an hour. And so, what I'm going to do, uh, I, and there's really sort of no good place to draw the line to cut this into two lessons. Um, and so, what we're going to do is, is wherever we end up tonight, um, at the end, we'll just stop there, and then we'll pick it up next time and finish it up. So, by the end of next time, we will one way or another finish this lesson. But we. I don't think we'll finish it tonight. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, we'll take it one chapter at a time. So let's start with chapter 15. Uh, who would like to read? After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your gr very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me? since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Elizer and Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur and the Ch Chal Chaldeans mm -hmm. deans, to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, heifer a goat and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all of these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The <clears throat> birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out of the great possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried <clears throat> at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking firepot with the blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, 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 the land of the Canites, Canizites, Cadmonites. That's why I didn't have to read. <laughs> Hittites, Perizzites, 
Rep Fates, Amorites, Canaanites, Gersh Gashites, and Jebusites. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are good. I, I, I came close. You nailed them. <laughs> well done. Do you want the next one? Really? No, no, thanks. No, why don't you stop it? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> we have in the beginning, why was Abram concerned? Because of his, he had, because of his offspring. Yeah. He had none. Yeah, yeah. He didn't have any and kids. And no heirs. Right. You know, and, and keep in mind that it's, it's, God made this promise to him, but it's been a while. It's, um, I'm not sure about that. What do we need? It's, uh, oh, let's see. It's been a couple well, of weeks. Well, in this case, it just says after this. All right. Okay. Um, but then, <clears throat> well, we'll get to the, I think we get to the time frame. But obviously, he's in, starting to think about it, right? So it's yeah. got to be some. Right. A bit of yeah, uh, Genesis 16, when, when we get into that, um, Sarah is 75, and it's been okay. 10 years since God made his promise. Okay. Okay. So this is this sounds like, uh, because this is after this, and then um, in, when chapter 16 starts, it says, now Sarah um, had, been, had born no children, and, and so it doesn't say after this, so this is kind of in the same time frame. All right. So yeah, I mean, God made this promise 10 years ago, and... And so he's saying, um, hey, God, um, you remember that? Because I'm getting old. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. All right. So was his concern faithful or faithless? Based on scriptures that I've read, I would say faithless. Okay. Poor thing. Human. But I think if he waited 10 years. We're know. supposed to wait. And mm. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it's human. Yeah. Right. Don't okay. we take things into our hands and think, well, surely God meant me to do this. He didn't want me to just sit on my hands and wait. I should help. Well, what did he, but he didn't, he, he, didn't didn't actually, he, didn't, he didn't actually give up faith, I don't think. 100%. I think it could go either way, depending on how you would have interpreted it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. I And I understand what you're I'm, saying, is that he... he I mean, he didn't he give was, up 100% no, faith. No, he, I mean, he, he still, still believed faith. in you know, who he, God was. Right. But I don't think he was trusting God was going to do what he said. Yeah, but he didn't, I don't think he gave up the faith, though. No, I don't either. Maybe he was going to ask for an explanation. He still had faith no. in God. No, unfaithful, just explanation, right. maybe. Yeah. yeah, he had faith in God because, you know, when we see, um, when he when he's concerned, what does he do? He prays, mm -hmm. right? That's his reaction. Well, that is a response of faith. At the same time, you know, um, he did, might have had doubts. Yeah, yeah, some faith some doubt. You know, it's sort of like, uh, you know, Lord, I believe, help me with my unbelief. You know. Um, all right, so so sort of yes and no, you know, yeah. I, I think there's there's a little bit of both going mm -hmm. on here. He, he trusts God, and yet at the same time, he's um, he's, he's struggling with doubt and um, and, and trying to trying to figure this out. And saying, God, just give me something to hang on to here. Give me give me something, you know that, and you know, and I, and I think about um, you know using using marriage as an example, all right? If my wife said, "I love you," and then you know. Ten years later, <laughs> she hasn't said anything, you know. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you still? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and if she said, I'm still here, aren't I? You know, <laughs> like, well, yeah, but. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> he's, he's worried about these children. He says, um. You know, the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus, would be one of his servants. This is sort of common in in this time period that if you didn't have any um, any heir, that you could name um, one of your servants uh, to become your heir. And so this would be his, his servant who is sort of, 
in the will as the as the heir of his um, his wealth. And uh, so, who are the children of Abraham? Doesn't have any children. Okay, not yet. Who eventually are the uh, children of Abraham? All the people who believe in God. Right. Yeah. All right. Ultimately, it's you know it's that song that I never understood as a kid. Father Abraham, have many sons, <laughs> many sons. All right, I am one of them, and so are you. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> and nobody ever explained that song to me. It's just like right arm. Okay, I still don't get it. <laughs> what, what? And you know, and and waving your arms and hands and around that doesn't help explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question though. If, if if God gave him all this wealth and everything, is it does it say anything about him? Uh, about him when, that he's does it say anything about his character that he is actually worried about his estate? Well, you know, I I mean he 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 mentions here who will inherit my estate, but I I don't think you know based on you know look at his relationship with lot where he, he goes well there's the the rich wealthy area and, and here this is pretty decent too but it's not quite that much lot take your pick and you know he's not gonna ooh he <clears throat> he doesn't i don't ever see any indication in his life nothing i can think of off the top of my head anyway where wealth is really a, a big issue for him um, and what is he really asking then? He wants a son. You know, sort of pass on the family name. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say name. He's talking about wealth. Well, I, I think that <coughs> the estate here um, has this sort of sense of where what we would call passing on the family name. I mean, it, they didn't kind of have that the same way, but you know, just that that desire to. Um, <laughs> what nowadays we probably say to pass on your genes, you mm -hmm. know, um, is that sort of thing that to have a, a, a son to, um, you know, because in, in that nowadays it's, it's not as big of a deal, but you know, um, for a lot of people, it still is. Sure. It is. Yeah. Um, Our family you know, is. look at all of the different, you know, reproductive technologies and stuff that we have nowadays. Um, but, you know, for others, it's eh, no big deal. You know, people are having less kids nowadays and, and stuff like that. Um, in this time period, it was, boy, it was a curse to, mm -hmm. I mean, there was, I mean, if you didn't have kids. And the women who were barren that were ridiculed by their Gotten rid of. peers. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and it was, boy, what, what sin did you do? <laughs> Man, God must really hate you to not give you children. I was... I was talking to somebody. I don't remember who it was now. Um, and oh, I remember who it was. Um, but he was he was telling me he was over in India, and um, and they were doing some kind of missions trip, and <clears throat> a there were <clears throat> there was this sort of um, area set up where they had. Um, doctors and nurses helping the poor and and stuff like that and, and but they also had um, some pastors there and, and he was brought in uh, while they were there um, to, to help out in this area and they were there just to pray for people and um, <clears throat> so people would come up with them and there'd be an interpreter there um, and because they'd be um, most of them speaking in Hindi and um, and <clears throat> they would translate for them to tell them what their concern was and asked them to pray and he, he says they they come to you on their knees begging you please pray to god for me <laughs> and he said a 14 year old girl came up to him <clears throat> and and through the interpreter told him please pray that god would give me a child because i've become the ridicule of my peers Already a fourteen-year-old 14 girl. Oh wow! What a what a what a different culture, I guess. I that 
just a lot of those countries, you know, when they, they, they turn 12, 13, 14 years old, they've already married. Yeah, what people that they, I mean, the individuals that they married are a lot older usually. Mm -hmm. They're not the same age. Yeah. So I just, I, that really, that didn't sit well with me. No, it doesn't <laughs> sit well with me. Um, yeah, I'm thinking. Because yeah. you relate it to yourself. My, Danny's 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I relate things that to my family too. I relate things like, look at this girl that went in for a dental procedure. She's in mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic and she's the same age as Cassie. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I just can't imagine. Yeah. What would you do? So. I have a question mm -hmm. about Lot because Lot was his nephew, so he's not considering having Lot inherit. Not considering him a heir. No, he's just having Eleazar, which I'm not sure if that is the actual slave he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, it is. So. You know what? That's an interesting question, and it's not something I've ever thought about. Maybe he felt like Lot didn't have the character. It could be. Or that Lot had enough already. That could be, too. Because he gave him so much I know. Him. And that's what I'm saying, too. Maybe he felt Lot just didn't have the character. <laughs> and Lot wasn't managing his own stuff very well, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, or it could just... I mean, I don't know enough about ancient Middle Eastern inheritance um, customs. Mm -hmm. you should. And why not? <laughs> <laughs> you should have learned that, that in school. I, I know. So, it, it could, have, well, it could have something to do with it. You can learn, you can learn those... Hebrew and Greek and all these other languages and stuff, but you can't do remember I that. Know, I know. If Mike Finnickel's on there, he'll probably come up. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not, nobody's on right now. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get off her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll struggle with it, but that's all right. All right. Um, all right. So <clears throat> we have this. I call it the path of roadkill. I mean, it's this, this sort of weird thing. Like, all right, God, give me a sign. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Imagine you're you're saying, God, I'm 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 struggling with this. You know, give me a sign. And God says to you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> a goat, a ram, a yeah. heifer. Yeah. Uh, bring me a bunch Doves, of a bunch pigeons. of farm animals, a couple of birds. <laughs> all right, and then cut them all in half. I was going to ask you as you were reading. I know I'm going to ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> what, what possessed him to cut him in half? What? But yeah, he didn't okay. cut the birds. And no, he didn't cut. No, the birds. no, didn't okay. Well, we couldn't birds. catch him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he he he, he had them. And he killed them. He sacrificed them. All right. So, all right. Here's here's what's going on. This is when when it, when you see in the Old Testament they made a covenant. Mm -hmm. The literal translation is they cut a covenant. All right. That doesn't mean it was cut in stone. What that means is they literally cut animals and sent them off. No. What they would do is they take these animals and they cut them in half. All right. And then they lay them like a path, where where these animals are the the um the sort of sides of the road. Road okay. kill. Yeah, that's what I said. They're like road kill. It's you have this path down the middle of, of these animals. of these animals that are that are um cut right down the middle, and uh, and it's probably like one of the birds on each side, you know. Okay, so the idea was then that the two people that are making a covenant together after sacrificing these animals and, and walking down this path of, among these animals, what they're saying is, may this happen to me if I break this covenant. And they walk down that path together. All right. And so what he's saying is, all right, you want a sign? I'll give you a sign. Let's talk covenant. All right. You cut up the animals, you get them ready, <clears throat> and we'll cut a covenant. Cut a deal. All right. So. And, and why weren't the birds cut into? They're too small. There's a reason. I'm no there must be. Things. Yeah, it says right here because they were probably too small. Because what? They were probably too small. 
Okay, now, Denise. It says right here. <laughs> That's too simple. <laughs> there has to be a There's reason. There's got to be a symbolism, right? Because I was going to say, <laughs> there has to be a reason, or God would not have said to bring them. <laughs> You know, it's, it's 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 sort of like when the kids That's ask true. me which candle on the altar to light first. <laughs> There's some deep symbolism, but the deep symbolism of of lighting one or the other that I can never remember is because you know at some point somebody asked some some acolyte asked the pastor which one do I light first, and and he goes, um, light the one on the right first. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and instead of going, because you gotta light one first, <laughs> that instead he said, because that one faces the east or Jerusalem, or, you know, or, or something like that, you know. Because it's at the right hand of God, the Father. Or, or yeah, I mean, you know. So, so like having your granddaughter say, "How come the candles are always the same height? They never <laughs> get small." <laughs> Very absurd. So, you know, the um, a, a lot of times things are done for very practical reasons, and, and you know, and, and that even applies to some degree to Old Testament sacrificial law and things like that too. You know, part of Old Testament sacrificial law, the way it was set up, was because the priests need to eat. That's why yes. you, that's why you don't burn up the whole sacrifice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think Scripture says that. Yeah. But they, the, the priests and their families have to eat. Yeah, I, I right. remember reading that. So, somewhere. so God is practical. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, there's certain things like that where we look for you know this sort of deep significance to different. You know that there's a there's a Latin term for the chair um, that the pastor sits on up in the chancel. It's like the if I remember, it's like the sedilla or sedia or something like that. That's really we were testing on that. Maybe. <laughs> right. but that's important to know. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the liturgical sure term, wasn't right, the, the little the little spoon that's up there in case some of the some of the host gets in the the, the common cup and you need to scoop it out. That that spoon, the liturgical term for that <clears throat> is spoon. <laughs> we were tested on that too. Wow. I got that one right. Even back in the day, it was called a spoon. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what it's called nowadays. <laughs> but it was actually listed in our liturgical terms. That was a trick question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pastor Marcia used to go to all of these liturgical terms, you know, with different things. You know, with the, I, I, I just call I just, and I, you know, they had a name for you know that the, the rope that goes around yeah. there, and, and why this and why that. He used to, he was always back there, especially when I was acolyte, you know. Yeah, telling me this is this as if I was going to remember. He, he got me on that one in my installation. Yeah, when we were back there. Yeah, he did to get you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and because he asked me why, and I said because it you know holds your your robe up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! It symbolizes the, the 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 whip that Jesus was scourged with, and I was thinking, yeah, right. Who came up with that? Because <laughs> you wear a robe, you know. Back in the day, it was what you hung your money thing from, you know. But no one would want to be so crass. Right, right. So, <gasps> oh, it symbol. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, um, I, I have yet to see any actual, um. You know, somebody where they didn't wear a, a robe on the robe, and then they, um, and then someone said, We should wear a, a robe on the robe to symbolize. No, no, no. They were already <laughs> wearing the robe, and somebody <laughs> said, What does that mean? <laughs> well, um, I suppose you could think of this when you see, you know. You just busted my bubble because I always enjoyed those little pieces of history that he would come up with. Well, I mean, some of it's legitimate. <laughs> You know, oh, you know I'll never be able to separate it. Yeah, <laughs> he left with all kind of things. You know, and, and, and I mean, I was surprised <clears throat> with some of the stuff that he came yeah. up with. It was kind of neat, though. He'd mm -hmm. be talking away, and he'd say, or when "Oh, he by talked, the way," and when he'd he tell talked you a little in those piece of history, lang like that. languages that he that he talked in. Yeah, that so, was another. That was another thing that that I thought was kind of hilarious. 
<laughs> but he could talk. He could speak it. Well, you would know. I was going to say, how would you know? I could come up and go, and I could, I could, I could, I could, I could be talking Spanish, right? Right. right. <laughs> no, I mean a lot of that. You know, the 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 clergy vestments and and the you know, there's there's a lot of things that that were developed with certain you know significance and and even. Even if it was done originally for practical reasons, you know, that, you know, there's a reason that I wear a white robe over a black, um, you know, there's, and, and there's a reason that, um, <coughs> that traditionally the clergy shirt is black and not sort of, and nowadays you can get them in all different colors and Purple, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. But, but you look sharp, you know, like a chartreuse one or something, you know? Yeah. But, you know, I, I like the black for its symbolism. Um, you know, with the, the, the robe of righteousness of Christ covering my sin, you know. Um, I, I like the symbolism, and so I go with it. Um, I, you know, I may not always, if if the need dictates otherwise, if, if you know, if, if I need to change it to um, to better communicate uh, with, with people for one reason or another, you know. It's just like some pastors wear their clericals all the time. Um and uh, and and they do that to because they're they want to communicate the symbolism of it. Um, at the same time, in in certain communities, uh, a lot of communities that turns people off, and and they mistakenly think, oh, it's because he thinks he's better than anybody, or you know, or something like that. And, and that's not right. But um, <clears throat> so it's always you know you always have to kind of look at your community and say, well, how is this going to be received? I tell you, when I go to the hospital, though, I, I wear my clericals because you walk in. It's a parking it. spot. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of those practical reasons. <laughs> I should, but we can cloak it in something uh, important. Hey, no, I'll, I'll tell you something. In Illyria, the pastor parking spot's horrible. <laughs> there is <laughs> one, but it's like way over on the other side. <laughs> you have to take a tram to get to <laughs> I was going to say a sham. <laughs> but... Uh, but no, no, at the hospital, you walk in wearing, wearing clericals, and you can go anywhere in the hospital. <laughs> they don't question you. <laughs> especially and especially if you have, in Cleveland, if you if you got your, your little ID badge uh -huh. thing, you just put that on there. and Go wherever you want. Yep. Nobody questions you. So, all right. <clears throat> so what does the burning pot signify? That cooks the meat. <laughs> and then when they get finished, they sit down and share a meal together. This further seals the covenant. <laughs> it's an incense of smoke, a sweet smell, savory, rising <clears throat> unto the Lord. Okay. Um, it, it appeared and passed between the pieces of the animals. Well, the, the fire cooked it. I don't think it was real animal <laughs> Oh, I think it was. <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> because when, well, when you think about um, <clears throat> God and the burning bush, fire, yes, uh, and by day was fire, and by night was the cloud, no, by day was the cloud, by fire, night was the fire, I think it meant the presence of the, God, really. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. So I do think it was fire. All right. Yeah, what 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 exactly you know? Um, what what was there an actual physical something there? Yeah, probably. I I think that there was. Um, I don't know that it necessarily burned hot enough to cook the meat as it passed oh, through. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was pulling your leg. Were you yanking our chain, Anna Marie? Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> um <laughs> you know. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't try to get into sort of what uh, kind of clay the pot was made out of or anything <laughs> like that. Oh, well, oh, I thought that he saw that in his. Okay. Yeah, because there was. I thought maybe it. I thought maybe dream. this came during his dream. I'm trying to see. I should bring down. When the sun had gone down, it was dark. The smoke. Where did I? Where was the thing where there was dread? Oh, that's up here. <laughs> okay, whatever. I do think it signified God, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In there. And, and in fact, I would, I would, it signified in the sense that that's where God was. In the same, mm -hmm. they use the burning bush as an example. 
Uh, I would even go so far as to say in the same way that um, that he is in the, um, or, or in a very similar way that he is in the bread and wine and communion, in the same way that he was in, um, in the temple and in the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies above the Ark of the Covenant, right? It was, it was, that's, you know, his sacramental presence um, with his people. He was there in, in a very special way. But if Moses saw the burning bush, why wouldn't Abram see the smoking pot and the flaming torch? Well, he did. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying it didn't actually physically do that. No, I, I, I would contend that it, oh, okay. that it was literally a, a, right. an actual... Yeah, all right. <laughs> But, he said, that "If you said there was, he would accept it. He doesn't have any reason to believe that there wasn't." Fine. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I thought you were arguing. We're all about agreeing. It. No, I, I, I yeah. thought they were saying it was just symbolic. But no, no. Bud, 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 Bud was, Bud was, Bud, Bud was taking your back, watching your back. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, no. The, the fact that it says it doesn't say he saw. A smoking fire pot, it says a smoking fire pot with blazing torch mm -hmm. appeared. Mm -hmm. Right. And um and so that means that anybody else that was there would have, um, would have also seen it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just that he was having a dream or, or something like that. Right. Um <clears throat> you know, but yeah, I mean as far as the exact nature of this fire pot, um, you know, if if you threw a rock at it, would it break? Or you know, or, oh, or yeah, I, well, you know, I don't. Know. I don't have to get into that <clears throat> significance. <clears throat> okay, so who made the covenant then? God, God. and Abram. Right? Was it one sided or two sided? One sided. One, because who walked through the um, the covenant path? Sounds like God. God. Just God. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is actually a one-sided covenant. Heavy wasters. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of you, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just God, All right? So, boy, you know, when when Abram, this is this is a pretty special thing. When God makes a one-sided covenant, well, okay, He doesn't quite often, um, but <clears throat> which you'd think that people would notice that. I mean. So many, I don't know, maybe it's just from actually looking at the Bible, but um, this is the thing about biblical covenants. Most of them are one-sided. It's God making a promise, and it has nothing to do with what we do. It's it's totally God saying, oh, okay, I'm going to bless you. All right. <laughs> and and then, you know, and, and once in a while there's a, uh, um, I'm, you know, if, if you if you walk in my ways and, and whatnot, and you know, then I'll bless you. And um, and if you don't, then um, you know, you'll be sorry. <laughs> but you know, but even then, it's it's. But then, if you um, if you turn back, then I will, you know, I'll forgive you and take you back and, and bless you some more. And it's not so much like. Boy, if you step out of line, man, <laughs> you're going to get it. You know, don't it's more, yeah, don't do that because that <clears throat> would not be good for you. And so if I need to discipline you, I will. All right, because I'm your father and that's what a good father does. <clears throat> All right. The, um... Sorry, the grammar is a little weird on that one. Um, Abram's descendants were to be in bondage for four generations, right? So, Abram's descendants, we're talking about the Israelites here, <clears throat> right? So, what would be a generation to Abram? Kind of long, I would think, because Abram was kind of old. I mean, even when he had... Um, Isaac, he was old. Yeah, he's like a hundred. And he lived after that for a while. So yeah. I don't right. know. If... So a generation is to to any given individual in this context. Excuse me, is how old are you when you have your first child? And that's a generation to you. Okay, Abram was a hundred. 
when his first child was born. So, therefore, for him, a generation would be a hundred years. So not necessarily born and died, born and... Right, right. So nowadays we usually refer to, when we talk about generation, we usually say about 20 years. Mm -hmm. All right, why? Because people are usually right around 20 when they have kids. All right, nowadays it's getting older, so maybe, you know, in the future a generation will be more like 30. <clears throat> but generally when we say generation, we mean 20 years. But to Abram, it, no, that's, that's not a generation. <laughs> that's nothing. <coughs> All right. Um, so how long were they actually um, in bondage? 400 years. 400 years. That's how long the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt. All right. So, God nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he was. That was a good guess. Good guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a place in your life where you need God to say the words in fifteen one? Do not be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. Every single day. Really, mm -hmm. and it can be the simplest thing, like. Help me remember what Christmas is about and not worry about these cookies and things. Or about the church, you know, what's going to happen, what can I do to help. It can run from what appears trivial to what appears important. So it's a daily thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. For me. Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> Can't top that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maria always gives the best answers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, that that's really it, isn't it? I mean, but but to hear that, I, I think those are just great words. Uh, of course, they are. They're from God. But all right. Um, do not be afraid. I'm your shield. I'm your very great reward. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and we need to be reminded of that because we do get we get hung up on, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. right. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a line that I use in my, um, in my email signatures. And that is <clears throat> sort of a, a play on the JFK thing. Ask not what you can do for God. Ask what God can do through you. Yeah. Because that's what it comes down to is, what am I going to do? Not a whole lot. At least certainly not without God working through me. So that when, you know, when I do accomplish anything, it's because God gave me the ability to do it. He, he put the circumstances in place to do it. He, um, he gave me the, the, the drive uh, to do it. The, yeah, I mean, you know, you just go right down the line. And, and why? Because God did it. And... And, you know, it, when what did, what did we do? It, it's sort of like, all right, dad's out working on the car, and, and the little three-year-old says, Daddy, can I help? And dad says, sure, hand me that wrench. <laughs> this one here? No, 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 that one over there. This No, that, this, yeah, yeah, that one, hand me that. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then they get all done, and, and dad says, car's fixed. And the little one says, and I helped. <laughs> he says, yep, we did it together. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, but, yeah, it really was dead. <laughs> All right. And, and so it is with us and God. You know, when we do things and, and God says, good job. <laughs> but it's sort of, he's kind of humoring us. <laughs> because we just couldn't do it without him. That's important for us to remember. But yeah, but that you know, that applies to the big things. It applies to the little things. It applies to things that we get all stressed out about and lose sleep about and, and everything else. You know, that's this kind of thing that that would be good to have as a poster on the ceiling above your bed. <laughs> so, like in glow in the dark letters, 
so that as you lie awake at night and can't sleep because you're stressed about something, <clears throat> that you have these words. Fear not. I am your, I am your shield, your very great reward. Oh, yeah. It's, it's sort of like the, the plaque that, um, that my dad had that said, um, Hello, this is God. I will be handling all of your problems today. I will require no assistance. <laughs> You know, some of this reminds me of a, a book I just read that was given to me for Christmas. It was, it's called Unbroken. It's supposed to be on the New York Times bestsellers list, but it's a long story. But the synopsis is, this is a story of a World War II uh, bomber crewmen in the Second World War in a B-24. But they got shot down and they're in the Pacific Ocean and they're on... <clears throat> three guys in a two-man life raft and, this, and the sharks are all circling around him and hitting the raft and, and he made a covenant with God that I guess a lot of people do get me out of this and kind of a deal you know mm -hmm. it, and it's a long story it goes on a couple more years and, and concentration camps and rough life and everything and he got out and there was this thing of, when, when the war was over there was this thing over him, and, and he didn't know what it was. And he became an alcoholic, he, he did everything wrong in his life, and he had these dreams at night where the man in the, in the, uh, uh, the sergeant in charge of the concentration camp was come to him at night, and the, the devil, he, he was the devil, and he, he just, everything just went wrong in his life. And it was really weird because his wife talked him into going to a tent revival in, in, San Francisco, that turned out to be one of the first Billy Graham revivals. And he, he went only to, to stop his wife, shut his wife up. So he <laughs> but somehow or other, you know, sometimes you go to church and just know they're talking to you, but you don't know why. And it, it was Billy Graham was talking to him, he thought, and he was telling him that he had made a covenant he realized that he had made a covenant and he didn't keep it. And it changed his life from then on. That day, mm -hmm. went home and poured the liquor bottles out, got rid of the cigarettes, started a youth camp, did a whole, went throughout the his whole life. Mm -hmm. Because he made a covenant in Kravata. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And God reminded him, you know, to Billy Graham. <laughs> it, yeah, really, really interesting. It's amazing how God works, yeah. you know, in people's lives. <clears throat> All right. Um, <coughs> All right. Given what the animals signify, remember this is saying you know, if if I break this covenant, may this happen to me. Uh, what happened to these animals? Okay. So, um, given what they signified, what happened to the participants in the covenant? Well, Abram. All right. Abram didn't go through the covenant. All right. But he was blessed and, and, and stuff, even though he didn't have to, you know, make that uh, pledge or anything. There was no, he didn't have a side of it, all right? But God was the one that passed through it. And he's saying, if I break this covenant, then may, may this, you know, horrendous stuff happen to me, okay? So here's the question. Did God break the covenant? No. No, God would never break the covenant, okay? And even though we didn't have, a, 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 or, or Abram didn't have a part um, in this covenant, it was for him. It was not, he didn't have any responsibility, right? But there were <clears throat> other covenants uh, that have been made, right? And we haven't lived up to our end of the deal, right? The, the, um, <clears throat> Just like I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. It's that kind okay. of thing. So, so somebody was broken. Yeah, right. See, we didn't, we broke the covenant, right? So God looks at, you broke the covenant, right? May this happen to the, to the one, um, may the, the one be, be slaughtered who, um, who breaks the covenant, right? Well, but God made the covenant. God made the covenant, and so 
God submitted to the consequences of breaking the covenant. So Jesus died for us, saying, "May, it, may I, may I be slaughtered if this covenant is broken." I mean, it's just an amazing thing to think about. God is saying, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless you and all this sort of stuff," and then the covenant is broken. Even, even though we didn't even have, we didn't even agree to anything, you know, or the, or, or we agreed to it, but we didn't have any sort of conditions put on us. But we do want to call Abraham, Abraham our father. Right. So if we want to call him our father, then we have to think that we're part of the covenant. Right. But if we didn't keep that covenant that we supposedly didn't have anything to do with. Well, we turned against him. Right. We turned against the one that made the covenant. Right? Right. And so then <clears throat> he ends up getting slaughtered in our place. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, right here we've, we've got the... Um, Oh, you pronounce 17. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we end up getting um, the benefit, even though we didn't live up to, um, we, we, we sort of just rejected the whole covenant altogether, but we still end up getting the benefit, and, and he ends up getting suffering for it, so that we can get the benefit. And that, which actually becomes the new covenant. Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Look at that. All right. So the final covenant is instead of God cutting these animals and passing through it, he himself is not cut in half, but um, uh, slaughtered. <clears throat> scripture does somewhere does not talk about him being broken I think I'm not sure and we do break the bread yep yep um I can't remember the exact terminology Maybe used and it probably depends on which enough. translation you're using so broken <clears throat> because if we um we don't use I mean, none of his bones were broken. A lot of times we think broken well, and we refer to yeah, people. No. We're referring to bones and none of his bones were broken. No. At the same time, Jesus was broken. All right? He, you know, when a toy is broken, it's, it doesn't work anymore. All right? His body was broken. It didn't work anymore. He was, you know, he was dead. And so he was broken. He needed to be fixed. <clears throat> but he was beyond fixing. Well, Unless you're God. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Well, <coughs> tell you, we're at time, and um, and this is actually a pretty good place to stop. And we'll do, and I'll, I'll bring out the rest of this. This is through Genesis 16 on this page, and, and I'll make sure that I've got 17 for next week, too. And so next week we will do 16 and 17. Let's close with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you made covenants with Adam and with Noah and Abram and um, and just Moses, many, many people throughout the years. And we've just been consistently unfaithful to you. And and you you make the covenants one sided because you know that we're not gonna live up to our side anyway. And so you make it one-sided to assure that we're going to get blessed instead, in spite of our sin. <clears throat> and we pray that uh, you be with us and, and show us your mercy. Help us to, to recognize and have faith in the, uh, <clears throat> in, in the mercy that you have for us, in the love and the forgiveness that you've given us in your Son, in his being broken, uh, that... We may always not only recognize that blessing, but in turn take that love that you've given to us and, and pour it out on all those you bring into our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.